It's time for the patch rundown. It is time. Patch rundown. The 13.10 patch, ru- patch rundown. Patch 13.10 is out. And so it's time for the rundown. Well, the patch is not out. It will be out tomorrow. It's still 13.9. All right. But the official patch notes are out. So let's go. Let's review everything. It's really long, but let's review it. So let's get through all of this. Actually, let's just, let's start with the Guinsu. Let's start with the Guinsu. It's actually right here at the top, just under the champions. We'll go back to the champions later. So let's start with the Guinsu, actually, before doing any of the champions, because the champion changes are based on the Guinsu pretty much. So Guinsu is now a mythic, costs more, gives 30 AD and 30 AP, and it gives you magic damage on hit, 30 magic damage. Critical strike gets converted up to 150 more, so total 180, like 20% critical chance into 30 damage, it seems. And it also gives you a stacking buff of attack speed on hit. So 8% attack speed on hit up to 4 times, so 32 max. So total comes to what, 57? 57 attack speed for the whole item uh, on maximum stacks and gives you armor penetration and magic penetration. So Kog'Maw loves this item. Kale, you know, maybe Jax, I don't know. Like a DPS version of Jax, I don't know. But it is massive, it's a huge change. So, and all of the changes in here are based on this one. So now we know the Guinsu gives AD and AP. Let's take a look. So Axon gets AP scaling for on his passive on the shield. Gets less shield base by 10%, but then, you know, he gets AP scaling. So if he doesn't buy Guinsu, then his shield is just reduced in early mid game. So there's that, I guess, for Axon. So you could say it's a nerf if he does not go Guinsu. And he gets movement speed scaling on end with AP on Q, which is fine. Like, it's not a huge change for action, I don't think, but all right. Kalista gets some AP on her E and some slow, uh, scaling with AP also, uh, which makes sense since, since she buy, she will probably buy the Guinsu. And yeah, so some more AP scaling. The damage is still physical on her E, but it is now scaling with AP. So that's great for Kalista, all right. Uh, Kindred also got AP ratios for the for the Guinsu in case uh, in case Kindred builds Guinsu, but I don't think Guinsu is necessarily viable on Kindred, so I don't think this will be this is pretty much irrelevant. But I don't know. Maybe if some build with uh, Rageblade Kindred emerges, then this might have some more use. But it's just small AP scalings on W and on the E, slow. All right. Uh, then it's the Nico. Those are just jungle uh, Nico buffs. So damage to monsters, W damage to monsters. So it deals a bit more damage to bo- bonus damage to monsters. And the uh, ult AP scaling is increased, which is kind of weird. I feel like Nico is pretty strong right now already, but. Now she's even stronger, more AP, more damage. So there's the Nico. If you're a Nico enthusiast, then probably very excited about this. Nico has got very cool gank patterns, and you know. <laughs> All right, let's. Well, let's see. I don't know what's her win rate, but Nico is pretty strong right now. So now she's even stronger. All right, nice. Uh, next one is the Vein. So Q AP ratio got added. So that's also because Vein buys Guinsu. So. When she buys Guinsu, at least the AP is not wasted on her right right now, right? So 50% AP. Guinsu gives 30 AP, so it's 15 damage. Uh, yeah, and it's, not, it's probably not a big deal, but you know, just so she has some AP scaling for the Guinsu. That's probably why they changed it. And those are the champion changes. So critical strike item changes. Crit optimization. Yeah, so so Guinsu is now a mythic. So you can go like 
either one, either infinity or infinity edge is also a mythic. So you like, because anyway, you choose your path, right? Do you go quick blade or do you go infinity? You can only buy one. So kind of makes sense that it's a mythic. I mean, it could be like this. It's fine. All right. Wait, but that means if you go infinity, you cannot go shield bow, right? Oh no. Okay. So immortal shield bow is now legendary. All right. So Immortal Shield will be a legendary item. And then you have just crit options for Mythics. So do you want to go Rage Blade? Do you want to go Infinity? Do you want to go Quick Blades? And Gale Force also. All right. And Shield Bow, anyone can buy. All right. That's fine. I think that's fine. That's, that's actually better. Because before you would go Shield Bow and then choose a crit item. Now you just cr choose a crit item as your like build path. And then you go shield bow if you need it i think i think that's that's nice that's pretty good all right more diverse build because crit is something that is kind of tied to the champion where getting shield bow or not is not really so i do like this but what about kraken slayer then kraken slayer i guess will also kraken slayer losing its true damage Oh, what the hell? All right, let's let's just read all of this let's just read all of this not speculate all right so let's start with the blood trister Immortal Shield Bow is uh, a legendary, all right. So buying BT. Okay. So unchanged, unchanged, unchanged. Life steal, even more life steal, 18% nice. While above 50% health. While above 50% health, gain additional attack damage. The cost is unchanged. It gives more life steal and it gives you even more AD. I mean 10 AD, 20 AD ish. 20 to 30 AD. Holy shit, Draven loves this. Like, Draven really loves this. That's really good actually. That's that's massive. Alright. What's the cost efficiency of this item now? That they didn't change the cost. Just added uh, stats and additional passive. I don't know. BT seems much stronger, but BT wasn't that strong. In all circumstances, I feel like now BT can just be like a default item with this additional AD, so. Yeah, so let's see, let's see. All right. So BT really good changes, I mean, above, you know, whether it's good or not, that depends on your point of view, but the item is much better. All right, let's see. Gale Force is one of the crit mythic item that's remaining mythic. I am recording this time, all right. All right, Gale Force. Gale Force is remaining a mythic, so it is still a mythic, all right. Cost unchanged, less attack damage, less attack speed, critical unchanged. It gives move speed? I think it always gave move speed, didn't it? It used to give you also, Gale Force now gives you attack damage to other legendaries, but gives you move speed by itself. I think it used to give you move speed on, like, as a mythic passive, right? Alright, and the active got changed to what? Dash and deal. That's actually much more damage. Plus up to 250. Yeah, Gale Force is like around 300 or 400, like late game-ish, from what I know. So now it's gonna be more like 600 on full crit chance, full build. Low self, playing champions. All right. Okay, so, and then still 60% damage, so it can total uh, around a thousand damage late game when they are at 25% HP. That's quite a lot. You know, it is still magical. No, it is physical. It is now physical damage. All right, so now it, I, don't, I like that, that's good. So Gale Force is now physical. This more damage, it seems, and executes under 25%. And scales with crit strike chance, all right. So those are probably good changes for Gale Force. And it gives you a spike in move speed instantly when you buy it and it gives you AD scaling. All right, fine. 
And the version from Orn gives uh, more move speed. All right. Then is the Guinso, which we started with. So Guinso, uh, you know, gives AD, gives AP. And it is now an item like this with magic damage on hit. Huge change. Kog'Maths love this. K loves this. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll need to wait and see. But honestly, this item is, is massive for those items. And it is a mystic now, so... Mastery, maybe? Maybe some hybrid Mastery, man. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm not sure I wanna see this, but alright, let's see, let's see. Who knows? Who knows what happens? Alright. Uh, Heartbound Axe, so it's a component for, I don't know, Triforce and stuff. Uh, gives more attack damage. And it's more expensive. So the recipe changes and it is more expensive. It's longsword dagger, longsword dagger, longsword. All right. Oh, that's actually good. So that's really good for uh, laners buying it because they have more components before buying it. It's great. It's a good change. Okay. Immortal Shieldbow, no longer a mythic. So now it's legendary. A legendary item. So anyone can buy it. You choose your crit build path pretty much. And then you can just buy it if you need it. All right. Uh, total cost. I mean, Immortal Shield Bow was kind of the item you would default to if you didn't need the Gale Force or Kraken Slayer, right? So now it's nice that you don't have to buy it. So I do like this. This is good. Total cost 3000. So it's less expensive. All right. So it's less expensive, the shield item. Kind of crazy. Unchanged, unchanged, unchanged. <coughs> Gives no attack speed now. All right. That's cool. That's allows it maybe for just some items, some champions which don't need. Maybe Gangplank likes this. I don't know. Maybe, or or someone who doesn't really need attack speed. So. Okay. Let's take a look at the passive. If you would take damage that would reduce you below thirty percent, you gain a shield, and it's changed to. If you take damage below 30%, you first gain a shield that is smaller. Backloaded. So so you get more shield on later levels, it seems. So it's like late, uh, for late game. All right, that's nice. So the shield is less. I like that. That's good. All right, that's really good. But we have the BT to make up for this, and the BT is really good now, so... Alright. Yeah, but I like uh, a bit lower shield on this, because it is pretty obnoxious when you can't kill the AD carry with this. And they have like Lulu and stuff with them also. Alright. I think, I think this is good. A bit cheaper, a bit less shield. Not a big deal still. It's, it's more of a defensive item, it doesn't give attack speed now. That's good. That's good, I think. Oh, it does give attack speed. It actually does. Alright, so... When it triggers, it used to give AD, but now it gives attack speed. So now you lose some AD. So you get less AD on the shield, but you get 30% attack speed. So, it, so actually, all in all, when it triggers, you get more attack speed. Then never mind what I just said. So... It is still good for anyone who like needs the shield, right? That's nice. All right, it's a change. It's that's just how it works. All right, not a not a huge. I can't say much about it. Now it doesn't give AD. Now it gives attack speed. All right, that's how it is. It's nice. I think overall this is this is good. <laughs> Infinity is now a mythic, so let's go. Infinity is a mythic. Total cost. Unchanged, alright, this is unchanged, unchanged, unchanged. Uh, 35% damage, the same. And now it gives you 5 AD to all other legendary items. So you don't have to, you don't have to have 40% crit to make use of this. So champions which have like a guaranteed crit on their ability, there are champions like this. Uh, 
Maybe they can just get infinity and nothing else. I don't know. Mm. But that's pretty much what it is. You just choose if you want the empowered crits, you get infinity. It gives you a bit more AD. I mean, pretty boring, honestly. Just a stat stick gives you, you know, damage and more damage and then more damage. That's pretty much what infinity always always did. But yeah. So now it's just a mythic. I don't know how I feel like, like about it. I feel like it's not that interesting of a change, but it's probably good for the, like the build buffs. So either you go infinity or you go quick blades or you go Winsu. All right. So it's a mythic. That's how it is now. We'll see how it plays out in the future. All right. Orange version, more AD. All right. Krikay's shards, however it's pronounced. Uh, so now the recipe is built from a longsword instead of a dagger. All right. It gives AD now. Doesn't give attack speed. Okay. So it's an AD item. And an attack gives you 60 bonus magic damage instead of 80. Okay, so so this item now gives AD instead of attack speed. Alright, fine. Small change. Alright, that's how it is. It's fine. Not a big deal. Alright. Kraken Slayer. Uh, is a legendary item now. Alright. Kraken is meant to be an incredible early game for high attack speed champions that still holds a plate. Damage ramping up against targets has been retained. So it's ramps up. All right, let's uh, take a look. It's uh, cheaper, so it's just like the shield bow. 3000 now. It builds from non quiver cloak and bow instead of a pickaxe. And 400 gold. All right. Less AD on the Kraken Slayer. Attack speed is more, 5% more. Crit chance the same. And every third attack applies total AD plus bonus AP. Kogmuff, 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 Kogmuff. So it is the Kogmuff item. So Kogmuff can now get. Kogmov can now get everything. He can get Kraken Slayer, he can get Shield Bow, and he can get Gwinsu at the same time. It's the Kogmov. It's the Kogmov. Uh, the Kogmov meta. It's coming. No. Whatever. I'll just ban him. Whatever. That's my problem. I'll just ban him. Whatever. I don't know where I'm gonna put Hekarim then, but all right. Anyway, whatever. It might be the maybe the Kogmov. Maybe the Kogmov meta. You never know. But like really, this all speaks Kogmaf to me because... All right, let's see. Anyway, it's magic damage. It is magic damage. 60% total AD, 45 AP. Subsequent triggers on the same target within six seconds increases damage by 50%. Wait, what? Subsequent triggers on the same target within six seconds increases damage by 50%. Up to a maximum of 100% increased damage. Okay, but it triggers every third attack. So first one triggers like this. The second one triggers 50% more. So after six attacks and after nine attacks, you get doubled. So you're you're proking 100% AP every third attack. Okay, it's not that much. All right. But it is ramping up. So that's why they went for this still holds a blade and stuff. So it's uh, still like a tank shredding item, but with magic damage now. You need nine attacks to really, or I guess every third attack needs to be on the same target, triggering this passive. So you can hit someone twice, then hit them with Kraken Slayer, then hit someone, then hit them with Kraken Slayer for 50% more, then hit someone twice and hit them for 200% of this. Not a huge deal. I mean, it's nice, I guess, for team fights. It's for tank shredding, AP damage. Probably hard to itemize against, though. 
of those AD AP hybrid. Kraken still is magic damage. That's the biggest change here. All right, this ramping up is kind of irrelevant. It is no, you know, four tanks. All right, the rest of the targets probably die before this gets ramped up anyway. But it is what it is. AP. It's actually really nice because it's not uh, true damage now, but like you have your AD damage, but then you get Kraken Slayer for tanks, so you still deal AP damage to them. And it scales with total AD. It's actually total AD. So it's like it's like getting 20% AP. I mean, 20% AD as AP on hit, right? On every hit. And even more as it ramps up. It's total AD, it's not bonus AD. 20% 20% damage as AP additional. And then still the AP scaling and some base. That's really good for tanks. Like it makes any AD carry a bit of a hybrid. I don't know man. Could be a bit problematic. I don't know, maybe maybe not problematic, but hard to item mice against if you're a tank. That's pretty annoying. <laughs> AD carry just builds this and shreds you with AP. All right, I don't know. So like Malphites or something doesn't like this because suddenly Jinx can get, get this and just shred you with AP damage, I guess. All right, what the hell? We'll see, but that's a huge change. That's a huge change, all right. Mercurial Scimitar. Magic re more magic resistance, fine. Never, <laughs> it's nearly never persisted. <laughs> all right, that's probably true. All right, whatever. It's very situational, but so more more magic resistance on the Mercurial fine. Mortal reminder. First much worse than Dominic's regards. Yeah, for sure. It gets five more AD. Nice, alright. It's a great item, I don't know, Garens or stuff like that. Build it if you really need anti-heal. The thing is, if you're AD carry, you probably don't want to buy anti-heal yourself. You want your, like, your support on your mid laner or someone else to buy anti-heal. I don't know. So that's probably the problem with this item. The problem is that anti-heal items are stupid and healing champions are stupid. That's the problem with this item. All right. Let's go to... Let's let's move on to the Navori Quick Blades, which is the third option or fourth option if you count the Gate Force, which you can go now. So you have four build paths. Now it's a mythic, so you can go Navori Quick Blades. And what changed? Let's see. Unchanged, unchanged, unchanged. Attacks to reduce non -ulti ultimate ability cooldowns by twelve percent of the remaining cooldown. The same. You don't need forty percent crit for this to work. Wait. You actually, you don't need 40% crit for it to work. Let it sink in. So you can just, you can just rush it. Rush it early game when you have longer cooldowns. And then it will give you more, even more cooldown reduction. Because it works on the first item. That is massive. Some Lucians and stuff like that. Love this item. Love it. All right. Gangplanks. What the hell? That's actually really good. Riven? Can you buy this on Riven? Crit Riven? No, probably not. Oh, honestly? Maybe you can buy this on Riven and not buy anything else for crit. That's the first item. That would be so crazy. All right, I have no idea. But that's pretty exciting. Holy shit. All right, let's see. Let's see. On Kiana? No, I don't think I can buy this on Kiana, though. No, on Kiana doesn't work. No way. All right, so anyway. Abilities. Deal 20% increased damage. Based on crit chance. So that's just the, that's uh, exactly how it was, right? Up to 20%, so yeah, that's the same. And gives ability haste. I don't know what it was. Okay, it was in a mythic, so it didn't. All right, so now it gives ability haste. <laughs> and on top of this, it gives you ability haste. So you can just buy this. I mean, if you buy this, then you still want more crit, but it will give you a lot of ability haste. 20. 5, 35-ish, 40, like, man, this is massive, this is really, really good for ad AD casters, Lucian, 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 that's what I'm thinking, I'm thinking Lucian, massive, all right, more stats from Orn, all right, whatever, Nun Quiver, no longer builds into any mythic, that's it, that's the update, don't buy it expecting to build into a mythic, because it won't, <laughs> right, 
All right, so don't buy it, people. If you're if you wanna buy, if you wanna build a mythic, don't buy the Nun Quiver. All right, all right, we get it. All right, let's go. <laughs> Phantom Dancer. Make wi make window shopping more intuitive. So it is more expensive. It gives five percent attack speed. Heartbound Axe. Wait, what the hell is that? Herbal Axe is this item. So now it builds from this. Herbal Axe, alright. And Zeal and 600 gold. I think this is actually, you know, not a good change because nothing changed. It got 5% AD for. 200 gold, not worth it. Alright. And it's got a different build path. Which is fine. Alright. So the build path is actually better, because this builds from two long swords, right? If I remember correctly. So the build path is better, but... This is like a overall a small nerf, I guess. Alright. Whatever. Rage knife. Rage knife has been remade to fit with the new Queen Sue. Right, because b Queen's two bits from this, so how, what is this? 1200 gold, dagger, dagger, gold, alright. Grants 20 magic damage on hit. Alright, so now it just grants 20 magic damage on hit. It used to, I think, give you physical damage on hit. And now, 5 attack speed, stacking at 3 times for 15%. We don't know how long is the duration between them, but you know how long the buff persists. But all right, fifteen percent attack speed stacking. So rage rage knife is like a small rage blade. All right, so it's like a small version. All right, whatever. So it's okay, okay. So that's what it is. It's just just a small small rage blade. All right. <laughs> Rapid fire cannon got changed. Something nice. Cause this item is kind of weird, All right? Three thousand now. Oh, AD, nice. Okay, now it gives AD. I do like that. It's more expensive. That's really good. All right, that's already good. Less attack speed. That's also good. Well, Draven likes this. Draven also likes this. This one. Draven likes the BT big time and it probably likes this one. Sharp shooter. 120 <laughs> Okay, damage is now scaling Oh Ah oh. So you get you get AD You get less attack speed And now the energized attack is scaling, so it doesn't spike early. And it's more expensive? 30 AD. How much is 30 AD worth? Uh, I mean, you don't really buy this item for the magic damage. Right, you buy it for... I still think, maybe, it is a change. It's not probably not that big of a deal. It does scale better for late game. Mid game. It just deals more physical damage than magic. I think it's good. I think it's fine. Draven still likes it, because all of the attacks, like, you might get less damage early, but you get more AD, so, like, consistent damage is higher. All right. So it's good. Okay. So this is good. This is good. Overall. Overall, it's good. But it doesn't spike as much early magic damage. All right. The bow is cheaper. And it builds from just a dagger and gold. Gives less attack speed. And gives magic damage instead of physical damage on hit. It probably be builds into Guinsu. I don't see the build buffs here. I don't know. Probably. So yeah, makes sense. Alright, so it's magic damage on hit now. And it's cheaper and gives less attack speed. Seems to be more gold efficient also. Since you only lose 10% for 300 gold. Alright. Runan's Hurricane. A 2,800 gold now. 
uh, dagger, zeal, dagger to zeal, recurve bow. Makes sense. So now it gives magic damage. Kogmov, oh my god. Kogmov can get all of this. All of this stuff. Kogmov can buy all of this. With Gwinsu, with shield bow, with the Kraken Slayer. Kogmov can get all of it. And get hybrid pen. What have you done, Riot Games? The Kogmov is unstoppable. 40% attack speed. Jesus Christ, why? I need... I, I need... <laughs> no, man. <laughs> that sucks. Alright, so the item is probably stronger now. Magic damage. Does Jinx like it? Jinx probably also likes it. For the rockets. Still fine. Magic damage on hit. Additionally, searches for any minions in range if no champions can be found. That's nice. So I guess the rockets will have more spread. Maybe. If you're a hitting champion and you know, you there's just one champion and a bunch of minions here, then it's gonna hit the minions. Alright, fine. That's nice. Maybe it's gonna hit the Heimerdinger two reds or something. Also. Wind Fury Bolt. Also oh, the bolt itself also deals more damage. So for Jinx that's really good. That's actually really good for Jinx. For 200 gold, all of this stuff? So, for 200 gold, more, they they t took away 5% attack speed, whatever. They added 30 magic damage on hit, and they increased the AD. So it's a more more damage item. I mean, a bit less attack speed. It's a huge buff to Runan, by the way. Jinx lo loves this. This Jinx loves already. Like, it's massive. Kog'Maw loves this. Loves this. What the hell? All right, that's good, I guess. All right, stronger item, much stronger. Nice. Static shift is back. Exclamation marks. She was meant. All right. All right, static shift three thousand. So it's gonna be chain lightning thing. All right, non quiver cloak, creatures shards. What is this? Wait, creatures shard. Oh, it's this thing. Alright, so it builds from this. This, this, this. Which gives AD now. Alright, alright. Noon Quiver, Cloak, and this 400 gold. Alright. Gives 45 AD, 25 attack speed, 20 crit. It's a crit item. And your attack chains the lightning for AP damage. 50% AP scaling. Alright. Will hit 6 to 12 targets. They chain to the next target within 600 range each time it does damage. So it can it can chain through like the whole screen or like 3 screens or something. If they are within 600 range. 12 targets? I mean it, it will hit like the whole group of minions. Alright. But it's also gonna hit like the whole enemy team. Pretty much. That seems excessive to me a little bit. I don't know. We'll see how this works. And more damage to minions. So that's nice. So shift was always like a wave clear item, right? Like Trin Dammers or something build this. Or AD carries who wanted to full clear. I mean wave clear, but they couldn't. Full wave clear too well. They would buy it. So... And the damage is scaling, so it starts at like, when you buy it, it's probably like 80-ish, or like 100-ish, and some AP, I don't know, we'll see, I have no idea, honestly, if this is even good, with all the other mythics being around, but it's an option for wave clear, alright, it's there. Stone Razor also got changed, so we got the static shift returning, and the old reward, st reward static, which became Stone Razor of, over time, now also got changed. So the Stone Razor is more expensive. It's got a different build path, or right, whatever. Deals more damage, and your energized attacks apply. Give you move speed now. This used to slow for like 0.75 seconds or 0.5 seconds or something. 
your energy attack applies 65% total AD. Magic damage. So now it hits for total AD. What is magic damage? 50% AP. I don't know who would buy this, honestly. Doesn't give cooldown reduction. Crit attack speed. I don't know. More AD and gives more ideas damage based on AD. No, total AD and AP. Who will buy it? I have no idea. But there it is. There's the AoE shift and there's the single target stone razor. With 65 AD scaling. Maybe Draven buys this. I don't know. Man. For more damage, I don't know. So that's the Storm Razor. Collector. Collector got a buff for 18 from went from 12 lethality to 18. So it is a six lethality increase. So without any cost increase. So it just got buffed. I don't know. Collector is alright. That's the first item for some lethality. So I guess it makes like I don't know, Samira or someone spike faster a bit. Not a huge deal. Alright. It's a nice change, I think. Right. But it's nice. And no cost increase. It's fine. Alright. Zeal is. Zeal was far too powerful. Cost increase. Alright. So it is 50 gold more. Whoa. Nice. 50 gold. Cost 50 gold more now. And, and the attack speed is lowered. And move speed is lowered. No longer unique, so you can buy multiple zeals. Very zealous you can become. Alright. I'm so sorry for that joke. That's nice. That's good. Overall, this is good. I think. It's a small nerf to zeal. Alright, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> and that is the last item of the Critical Strike items. Damn, there's not so much, I think, for the other ones, but alright. So now, assassin item changes. This concerns me personally the most here, but anyway, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Let's take a look at the assassin item changes. All right, Prowler, Prowler, Prowler's Claw, no, Prowler's Claw, Duskblade, <laughs> Duskblade, so the new Duskblade, the new Duskblade is really weird. I think it's not that good. All right, let's read through it, because those items I did look at before, all right. No longer empowers your basic attacks, so it's not like you go into stealth and you deal damage. Now, it gives you bonus damage on your spells, so abilities. 15% bonus damage based on target's missing health, so it's an execute now. Maximize at 20% remaining health. So there is that. It em empowers your spells to be an execute. Uh, so what? Per... So 80%, so per what, per 10%, per 10% missing HP you get 1.5% damage, right? I don't think it's that much damage. We'll need to see in game, it's not, it's not terrible. When a champion you have damage within the past 3 seconds dies, you become invisible, that's how it used to be. And now, when a champion you have damaged, so you, can, you don't even have to kill them, you just have damaged them. You become untargetable by non-structures. So it is like a Fizz E. Or like a Gwen, I think, W, right? You become untargetable. This effect does not destroy incoming missiles and breaks upon taking any action that would normally exit stealth. So if you deal damage. It's not set in here, but it is still 1.5 seconds from what I read somewhere before, pretty sure. So it's still to 1.5 seconds, but now it's untargetable. So you go in, I don't know who would buy this, probably Talon, maybe, because Talon has got like assassins which have problems with like killing the target and then getting away. If Talon kills you with this, then he's got 1.5 seconds to walk up to a wall and jump over it. And then he's out, right? Pretty much. So for Talon, I think this is really, really good. Um. Yeah, he cannot buy Prowler anyway, but all right, let's look into it. I guess he can. All right, let's, whatever. Prowler in a sec. So Talon, maybe. I don't know what assassins would buy this necessarily. Kiana, probably not. Uh, 
Is that, I don't know, Is that probably doesn't care. Is that probably wants something more chunky, maybe Eclipse, I don't know. So, f so I don't know. I don't know what assassins would buy this. It is weird. It makes you untargetable, which means they cannot hit you. Cannot, AD carries can't basic attack you. You probably kill the AD carry when it's procs, but I don't know. Uh, so it's like a survival item. It's a defensive item, essentially. It's a defensive item for assassins, uh, which works like this. And the good thing about it is it works on spells always. I mean, maybe it's actually a lot of damage, 15%. Maybe it's actually, maybe it's enough to justify playing it. So at 50% HP, you're gonna get what? 10% increase or so. 10% or so increase in damage at 50% at HP. It's not bad, man. It's probably gonna give you less damage overall than the new Yomu, which we'll get to in a second, but all right. So that's the Dusk Blade. We'll need to see. I think it's not the best option out of all of the items, but we'll need to, to see in the future. Talon probably can buy it. But Talon also wants the move speed from Yomu, so maybe he doesn't even buy it. It's a bit gimmicky of this untargetable. I don't like it that too much, to be honest, personally. It is what it is, all right. But we'll see in the future. This is interesting how much damage this actually is. I don't think it's that much, but we'll see. I don't know, all right. So now, Prowler's Claw. Rest in peace. Moment of silence to the old Prowler's Claw. All right, enough of the silence. Anyway, because now we're talking, now it's the, now it's the noise. All right, let's go, whatever. There's time for silence, but now it's not the time for silence. Now it's time for the review. So, Prowler's Claw. Rest in peace, the old Prowler's Claw. Mythic tier item. Two legendary tier item. It is no longer a mythic. Anyone can buy it. But why would anyone buy it? <coughs> I don't know. Alright. 3000 gold. It is cheaper. 55 AD. Less AD. Less ability haste. Less lethality. The active is removed. And now... After dashing, blinking, exiting stealth, next attack deals AD. For ranged, it's less. 10 second cooldown. 10 second. If the owner is melee, it also slows. So Prowler basically got the old Dusk Blade passive, which was not that good to begin with. And it's got 10 seconds cooldown. It is 85% AD, which is sizable. I think no one will buy this item. No one gives a shit. Who buys Prowler? No one buys it. No one buys it. Dead item. I think no one buys this. I don't know. No one cares because it's like the old Dusk Blade. No one cares about the old Dusk Blade anyway. It was just for more for the stealth than the actual damage. Now you can get, at least it only applies the spells, so you don't need to actually attack. Some champions don't want to, or don't have to, like, I don't know, Kane maybe. So for Kane, like bl blue Kane, this is good. But this item, I think no one buys. I think it's crap. I don't know, we'll see, maybe I'm wrong. Time will tell, but I think this is bad. I don't like this change. Talon doesn't like this. Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai got gutted by this change. When Rek'Sai is, Rek'Sai is really, really behind because of this. Because like, Rek'Sai just walking up to you, prolering into instant knockup was so strong. And now Rek'Sai just gets completely kited. So like, Rek'Sai, this is like a huge, huge nerf to Rek'Sai, I would say. All right. You know, Kiana obviously also really likes Prowler. You can Prowler, combo them and E away with the Q. It's amazing. Can't do that anymore. Also, you can ult into Prowler to amplify the damage. That's it. It's gone. What do you do? So, Prowler is shit, in my opinion. We'll see in the future how it uh, plays out. But the old passive is gone. The active is gone. Alright, you almost got split. The new default items for old assassins, I feel like. Really good item, actually. Uh, probably you just get it on Kiana. I mean, I don't like it that much. 
let's get into it. All right. But it's probably the default for Zs for everything. All right. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> now it's Mythic. A bit more expensive. More AD. More ability haste. Really nice. Already really nice. Uh, 25 bonus move speed out of combat. So even more move speed. That's nice. No, wait. Uh, okay. The... This is the active, this is the active. So active gives more move speed. That's, that's actually really good. All right. Arrow speed has been removed, kind of, because we got a new passive. Moving generates spectral shards. So it's like static shift thing. You gain move speed out of up to 40. So just by moving around, you can get all of this move speed back. And at maximum stacks, you gain even more lethality. So this item gives you whatever, 18 lethality or 50 or 20 lethality, then based on top of that, you can get 20 more lethality or, you know, reasonably probably like 10 or 12 when you buy it ish, like mid game, early to mid game, right? So this item gives you like 30 lethality by itself. It gives you more ID. Like in terms of stats, this is incredible. I think like this stats reset three seconds after dealing damage to an enemy champion while at maximum stacks. So you stack it up and then you burst someone within three seconds you get all this lethality and other legendary items will give you 7 AD with it man what can I say it's pretty good it is pretty good I am not a huge fan of those items which stack up on movement and then you have a short buff I kind of don't like it personally but overall, this item is really strong. Can't deny it. I think it's really good. You have Yomon, all the assassins now, like Kiana, whatever. Z. Uh, I mean, Z, Kiana still can go Eclipse, right? So it is an option. But either you go Eclipse or you go this, probably. Dusk Blade is an option also. Dusk Blade is kind of bad. All right. I don't know. I think with this passive, this lethality, this Yomu will give you more damage than Dusk Blade with this 15% damage on the abilities as an execute. I feel like it doesn't even compare. However, this is more of a consistent damage because it is always active. And this one is only when, you know, when you get the move speed and for three seconds after dealing damage. So I still think Yomu is the default item for all assassins now. It's just gonna be Yomu, which is nice. I really like this move speed, really like this move speed even though it is now only for three seconds after dealing damage. <gasps> All right, 7 AD. I'm kind of excited for these changes, you know, to be honest. But yeah, I think Yomu is the default item. All right. And it's actually the last item. Rest in peace, Brothers Claw. This is Rush. And this is the default, probably. For damage, at least for damage. And Eclipse for, for survivability. And with that, the assassin items are done so let's take a look at the support items and it starts with the abyssal mask cost has been reduced and re recipe has been changed more effective magic resist option for support tanks so total cost goes from 3000 to 2.4 thousand catalyst of eons specter skull so catalyst the Spectre thing, the Magic Race thing. And now it builds from Kindle Gem and Negatron Cloak. All right, that's much different. That's very, that's actually a nerf. But I mean, it is much cheaper. All right, less HP. More resist. Even more resist. What the hell? All right, six resist a lot. 550 units. <laughs> Red reduces their magic resistance. Scales for bonus health. Gain more, even even more magic resistant per enemy. All right, and eternity has been removed. So I really like this. This is good change. It's good. No more of this uh, rod of ages thing from the catalyst. It's a good change. Tanks like it and stuff. Because you don't necessarily need this. You can now buy it on champions without uh, mana. Maybe also better. So yeah, there it is. Abyssal mass good change. I think that's good. <laughs> Less HP. More resist. Actually, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? It's actually kind of crazy. And and you still keep the passive. I think this item is actually really strong right now. 
Yeah, because it is cheaper 600 gold. You lose a passive that you don't really care that much about. It's fine, alright. You lose some HP, you gain a lot of magic resistance. And then you gain more magic resistance and you reduce their magic resistance. So this works. It's a passive. But the item is cheaper. You can just buy this and no, no other magic resist items and it's like... Yeah, it's, it's really strong. It's really strong. Actually, this Abyssal Mask is really, really good. Gives ability haste still. Alright. So Abyssal Mask is good. Ardent Sensor. Is it the sensor? Or is it the cancer? Again. Or is it the sensor? Hopefully, it's just a sensor. Alright. 2100. It's cheaper. Different build path. Amplifying Tom. Now it's Wisp. An idol, so it gives move speed. Alright. Alright. Less AP. Less mana. Enhances your wolf. Granting. Magic damage. Healing or shielding under ally. Enhances your wolf. Granting you attack your attacks. Attack speed. No, so it is just a small stat buff. So it is better early game, a little bit. And damage on hit. <laughs> Man, Lulu and Kog'Maw. Lulu and Kog'Maw. Oh, the best friends. Lulu and Kog'Maw, man. They are, they are coming. Lulu and Kog'Maw bot lanes. Oh my god. Oh. Poor solo queue. All right. Chalice. <laughs> so that's it. It's just a buff. All right. And it's also cheaper. It's And it's cheaper on top of that. All right. It gives less ability power, so less shields, I guess. But it's just more damage. And gives move speed to those supports. This is actually huge. This is huge for supports. Oh my god. All right. So there it is. Whatever. Kog'Maw's on the bot lane with Lulus everywhere. Chalice of Blessing. Oh my god. Alright. <laughs> Alright, let's move on. Chalice of Blessing. Chalice is being introduced. New component. Alright, Chalice. So Chalice is back. Kind of. Now it's 900 gold. Crystal plus Fairy Charm. Health. Mana Regeneration. Gain Health Regeneration for every... Mana Regeneration. So it gives you HP based on mana. Fine. I wonder if it counts this in. Probably does. So it's like the old chalice kind of. Alright, fine. <laughs> A bit more region for the supports. Nice. Chemtech Putrefier. The anti-heal item. That's unchanged. Gives you more shields. More mana regeneration. Playing with this chalice thing. Like into it, less AP, and it's cheaper. It's a buff, obviously. Or actually, it's less mana regeneration. I still think it's a buff because it's cheaper. Supports will just want cheap stuff, right? And it gives you more shields, even though it gives you less AP. So it's not really. So this is not really. Doesn't change much. It's probably still better scaling late game for the Lulus and Kogmas, you know. <laughs> anyway. And best base mana region, Lord. I think it's a small buff, like very minor buff. All right. Whatever. Whatever. Ecos of Helia is. What is this? What even is this? Raise those grails because we're bringing back the spiritual successor. Item enchanters. So if you're poking down, as Imperial Mandate has moved down to legendary. Imperial Mandate. Okay, so I guess Imperial Mandate was a mythic. I'm sorry, I don't know the support items. I'm gonna be honest. I have no idea what even all of this is. Alright. But I guess Imperial Mandate is now a legendary item. So that's so that's good. That's good. And then this is what? So this item now is a mythic? No. It is a mythic. So, Ecos of Helia. 
It's like a new chalice, it seems. Chalice and the mirror, all right. 30 AP, 200 health, ability haste. A lot of base mana regen. Dealing damage to an enemy champion grants soul shard up to two. Healing or shielding, an ally consumes all soul shards and restores 20 to 100. Health and heals and deals 30 to 200 magic damage per shard to the nearest enemy champion. <coughs> so on dealing damage you get shards. Healing or shielding an ally cons consumes and restores to the... So you heal someone, they get more heal. So they get healed more, so it's good for Soraka. So Soraka throws a Q, gets a charge, then hits someone, then heals, heals the ally, they get healed more, and then it's like bounces the damage onto the nearest enemy champion. Maybe Sona, maybe Soraka. <laughs> a bit of a, like a poke item. It's decent for this type of supports. <laughs> it's not some like crazy amount of damage. 30 to 200. Based on allies level. Actually, it's not much healing also. <laughs> it, it doesn't seem that strong to me. I don't know. And then 3 ability power per 25% base mana regeneration, so it gives you more AP, I guess. And gives ability haste to other legendary items, so that's good. Alright. What does the disables harmony mean? Harmony. Gain base health regeneration for mana regeneration, so this item disables the harmony. So you no longer gain health regeneration based on mana regeneration, but then instead you get AP. <laughs> so that's fine, so for laning phase you have some more base HP, regeneration, and then you buy this, and it's like early mid game-ish thing, and then it's actually really cheap. And then you get some more AP, I guess, with this, alongside this passive. It's fine, it's decent for like poke supports, yeah, poke and healing, all right, it's fine, it's it's all right. <coughs> I don't know exactly who will buy this and stuff, we'll see, but the item itself is not bad, I would say. So yeah, even shout. With a cost and recipe adjustment to make it in line with the rest of the ecosystem. So it is cheaper now. Life will pen on null mental plus 800 gold, alright. Ability haste, good change from 20 to 20. Okay, nice. Red games. And so I guess it's unchanged or or, the, or there's some typo here, don't know, alright. Unique passive. Becoming affected or applying an immobilizing or grinding effect to or from an enemy. Champion affects them and all enemy champions with, within 600 units with Repent, increasing the damage they take by 10% for 5 seconds. Becoming affected by or applying. So, so if someone hits you with an immobilizing spell, then they will take more damage. And if you hit some enemy, then they will also take more damage. Alright, and it... Uh, and it empowers uh, other legendary items with 5 armor and 5 magic resistance, so that's fine. That's how it is. Alright, Imperial Mandate. Now it's a legendary. It's cheaper. Different build path. Uh, more AP. Same ability haste. Well, story mobilize. Uh, for 4 seconds. Detonate the mark. Dealing. Granting both. Move speed. Obviously, that's slow. 30 to 75. Oh, so already on the damage, you already deal damage to them. And then marks. And then the mark deals more damage. So the total damage is higher. It's like 105 to one to 225 actually. And it was 90 to 150. So now Imperial Mandate deals damage. 
and then like detonating the mark also deals more damage so overall it's a more damage item so for ash support or something it's decent and it deals magic damage and gives more ap and it's cheaper so it's just buffed period it's no longer a mythic and it's just buffed Finnish codex now more ap all right but no scaling on the damage so it's purely a support item for a bit more early damage all right fine that's fine so imperial mandate is buffed fair all right i think it's fine let's see how it's how it plays out but the change is good i would say for the item itself all right knight's vow knight's wolf the knight's wolf we're reducing the cost and changing the item recipe to be more accessible build that integrates life or pendant total cost all right it's cheaper different build path less health now gives armor all right so it didn't give any armor now it gives armor ability haste is five less base hp regen is lowered so it's it is an uh, buff of overall with this extra armor i feel like right an ally all right while your ally is nearby redirect 10 percent of the pre-mitigation damage all right and heal oh so now it's pre-mitigation so that is uh, before applying the you know resist and armor so now the passive or the active thing is stronger you take damage for them you get healed for more no you don't heal for more you heal for exactly the same but you redirect more so the item is stronger stronger passive you take more damage from them but also you have more armor so probably you still take less damage but you take more damage off of them so this item is buffed this is a, a huge buff to the item I mean, it's not the biggest deal probably but it is stronger and it's a bit cheaper so that's nice all right nice bow there it is uh life will pendant where is that this is intended to be a new item component for tank support that will give them stat profit they need to for an affordable price all right cloth armor rabbi crystal hp armor and ability haste so it's just a component like that with a bit of hp armor ability haste it's nice all right that's cool that's fine uh there it is all right locket of the iron solari uh, locket is currently performing well on life feeling a unique spot as a support damage mitigation tool they just give it a small cost all right so it is cheaper life on pendant non magic mental on change grants your ally champions with 850 units a shield for 180 330 and now it is 200 to 360 so the shield is bigger that's nice i like that that's cool that's fine not much but it is better it is uh, higher right Grat nearby allied champions three armor and magic resist <coughs> okay so that is unchanged so all of this is unchanged all right so the shield is just uh, a bit stronger and it is a bit cheaper all right that's fine so that's the locket so it is a buff so nothing nothing changed the only thing that changed is the build buff and it gives a bit more shield and it's cheaper so that's good for the locket it's good all right mikhail's blessing the build buff is different the cost is the same child is forbidden idol okay gives hp doesn't give any resistance that's probably good that's probably good because you can buy it any you know in any situation then gives a bit less heal and shield power just rounding the numbers probably remove all crowd control debuffs Another champion 
and restore HP. Now it's removed all control debuff and restore more HP. Gain base HP regeneration because it builds from the chalice. So now it gives HP regeneration for mana regeneration. And it gives 100 re mana regeneration. All right. So it gives you HP regeneration. It builds from chalice. It gives you HP, doesn't give you resist. And, and heals for more. It's a good change. Soraka likes this, I don't know, whatever else. If you need this as a support to, you know, build it for your AD carry, remove the CC, then I guess it's a buff. And it's more versatile with no magic resist on it. Great, all right. Moonstone Renewer. Because of Helia, the previous item. Other Moonstone preview overlap. <coughs> Alright, so this is Moonstone is a safer chain healing item where it costs you want to deal some damage and heal. Alright. It is cheaper. Bundle Glass Mirror Kindle Gem, so it's just cheaper. Less ability power. Uh, this is all unchanged and Healing or sh shielding an ally chains to the nearest ally ch champion, excluding yourself. Healing or shielding? Of the original amount, what the hell is that? So you can shield one ally and you will shield the other ally at the same time. Or heal. That's nuts for Soraka or something. Think about Soraka, how much value she provides. They don't state how much range on this is. Like what is the range for this jump, but... Soraka? I don't know, all, all of the supports actually. In teamfight, Soraka healing everyone. AoE heals from Soraka, kind of, on two targets ish. 40%, so it's almost. Yeah, 1.5. Healing is 35, and all shielding 40%. What about Morgana shield? What about Morgana shield? Can Does this double the Morgana shield on two targets? Do two targets get fucking Morgana shield now? No, no way. I don't know. I need to see, but that's so weird. Empowers each of your legendary items with five ability haste. Alright, so it's a so it's the mythic. Alright. That's really good for Soraka's Lulu maybe with the shield. Like Nami, I don't know. Whatever the supports. It's pretty good if you have some shields. Soraka Soraka gets so much more value with this though, in team fights and stuff. I don't know. It's it's probably not that big of a deal, but it is a big deal, I would say. All right. So we'll see how it plays, but it's it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. All right. <coughs> Radiant Virtue. Position as an item for top and jungle tanks. By lowering costs, I've been open up a greedy support item to purchase for looking to snowball their leads. Yeah, those Zack tops love buying this item. All right. Or Zack meets, or I don't know. So it is cheaper now. Less HP. A little bit. Less ability haste. For 500 gold, that's already... That's already a buff, alright. Upon casting your ultimate, you transcend, well transcended. Heal for 3%, then... <coughs> Change two upon casting your ultimate transcend for nine seconds while transcended increase your maximum health by twelve point five percent. So it's less increase in health. And the allies heal for less also. So the the active got nerfed a little bit and the or the unique passive got nerfed a little bit and the stats the ability haste and the HP got nerfed a little bit. I think it's a buff overall to the item because it's cheaper so supports can buy it. That's exactly what they were looking for. But that also means the Zacks and all this get it sooner. Top Zacks and all this, I don't know, whatever, man. Maybe it's not terrible. I mean, it's definitely good for them, for the for the top laners and for the supports. I guess it's good, all right. But it being so cheap, it's really cheap, all right. Grand Soul Order, legendary items, 100 bonus health. 
Oh, and now it grants 75. So all across the board, just nerfs, but makes them cheaper so that it is accessible for supports. I still think it's good for like top laners who want to just buy it like Zack or, you know, I don't know, Nunu, I don't know, something like that, who buy this. They are happy with this change for sure, because it's cheaper, so. And they still get the same effect, a little bit weaker, but not the biggest problem. So it is a buff, I think. Overall, it's a buff. All right. And more stats from Orn, sure. Redemption. Adjustments, unchanged. Now it gets bits from Charlie, so it's gonna have the regeneration thing. HP, heal shield power. Yeah, now gain space, regener HP regeneration based on mana. And target Anaria. Beam of light, restores. 18340 and burn enemy champions all right so that's the same after 2.5 seconds restores more hp a little bit whatever and burn enemy champions so redemption heals a bit more gives more hp so it's a buff to redemption small buff not a huge deal it's nice i guess small buff to redemption it is all right surely as battle song Surely is currently one of the strongest support items. All right, it is cheaper now, so let's buff it by making it cheaper. Lol, lol. All right, ability power thirty-five. Grants you and allies move speed unchanged. All right, healing, shooting, and buffing grants you and them move speed. <coughs> Alright, so healing, shielding, and buffing allies gives them 20% move speed instead of 25, so that's a small nerf, actually. It's a small nerf, alright, small nerf, but it's cheaper, so... So 5% less move speed on this, and 5 less AD, but it's cheaper 200 gold. So overall, it's probably a small nerf. But it being cheaper, you could say it's still a buff, so I don't know. I think it's good, if you are a support and you want to buy it, then you probably would rather have this changed than unchanged. Just have it a bit cheaper, right? Because you buy it for the active and like, and I guess this unique passive, not so much for 5 AP or this 5% is not that relevant. So maybe it's still a small buff, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I guess less AP means less shielding also, but <clears throat> yeah, at, at worst, I think this is even. This is not really a nerf, I don't think. All right. More stats from Orn, sure. Stuff of flowing water. Like Ardent Cancer, we're putting more power into the passive and adding move speed so that it's easier to keep up with the teammates you'll be supporting. Cost less. Less AP. Base mana regen. Movement speed 5%. Base mana region is less. Uh, it doesn't have the... It does not build from the chalice or anything like that. But gives less base mana. Less AP. Move speed. Now gives move speed. Killing Ocean Ikanai grants you both ability power and ability haste for 4 seconds. And now it's grants you both more AP. Early levels and to enable the haste. So it's a buff in the early game for this stuff of flowing water thing. Alright. So it's a buff. That's good. Alright. Move speed. Fine. Less AP. Less base mana region. Fine. Alright. Watchful Wordstone. Cost of items going down. Need to create late game. Gold sink for when your inventory is full. After completing your support quest, you can get this. This can put uh, pink words in here. And base mana regen. It's 50% now. Up to three words. Grants you an increase to bonus, health, attack damage, ability haste, and attack power. So whatever, if you play pike, you still get the AD or something, right? 
whatever you bought. If you bought health, you will get more health. If you bought abilities, you will get more abilities. That's fine. So it's got some scaling to it. That's nice. And then it builds into this Vigilant Wordstone. So now you need to buy it. After completing your support quest, all right, makes sense. HP 250, ABTAs, base mana region 50%. Can store up to three control words. <coughs> Increase your staff word and control word placement caps by one. So you can put four words and two control words. So you can, can have two pings on map from just one player. So if your team is not wording anything, you can just word for two people, kind of. That's actually nice. I don't know. Late game, everything's gonna be just worded. What do you do, man? But... I mean, it does make the support uh, role more impactful. And if you're a good support, and put those pings and buy them and put them on the map, then you will be rewarded for that with more map control, I think it's good. So supports become more meaningful, I would say, with in the vision even more, right? So that's good. 20% increase to bonus health, attack damage. Oh, now it's 20%, so it's actually some significant scaling over 8% from this thing. So you don't have to upgrade it, but you want to upgrade it because you can put one more pink. All right, I get it. That's nice. I, I like this. This is a good item. Is it good for the game? I don't know. But it definitely makes supports more impactful in the vision game. So there's that. All right. Zix Convergence. Recipe cost adjustment. We're looking at doing improvements. All right. Total cost 220. 2200. Kindle Gem, Glacial Buckler. Life World Pendant, Glacial Buckler, 250 gold, so it's cheaper, less HP, more armor, less ability haste, so tweaks, probably buffs, I mean more defensive, alright, it's more defensive, tweaks, let's call it tweaks, for 8 seconds after you immobilize, you accomplish attacks, that's unchanged, alright, so they just uh, tweak the base stats, that's it, alright. More armor, less ability haste, less HP, and it's cheaper. It's fine. It's alright. If you buy it for armor, then it's better, I guess. It's fine. Okay. Other items. So, that is the support items done. So now we go to other items. So something still got changed. Divine Sunderer. We're nerfing Sunderer. Less of a tank counter, especially in lane. Alright. 125 base AD. 160 of base AD, so more damage, plus 4%. Oh, so it does less damage based on max HP now. That is not necessarily... Okay, so it's less of a tank counter, but it's better in like, you know, let's say you're playing Jax and you play against a Riven or something, whatever. So Riven is not a tank, so you will deal more damage to this Riven with the more base AD. Kind of, or it will even out. I don't know the exact math on this, but it seems decent of a change. It's less of a tank hunter, all right, so that's maybe negative. Maybe it was too strong, I don't know. So there it is, now it's more AD, less HP. And 2% if range, so if you range, you don't buy this, all right. Fimble Winter. Free, you say? Filbu Winter's passive elerastic shield no longer consumes the user's mana. So now the shield that you get on spell casts, I think that's how it works. Uh, does not take mana anymore, so that's good. Alright, so there it is. It's a buff. It's not weak, but it's nice. Uh, force of nature. Simply too strong. <laughs> it is. Damn right, nerf it, please. Make it cheaper, more gold, less resist. <gasps> Wait, absolute maximum stacks is 10? What was it? Force of nature. Wait, let's uh, take a look at the wiki. 
Vou testar esse dissipado. Well, 10 stacks of steadfast, 10 move speed and 10 bonus magic resistance. So it used to give you like a static stacking more and more damage reduction if you were taking damage, but now it just gives you flat 30 magic resistance, I guess. I wish it was like listed in here better. So now you need 10 stacks. So basically you need 10 stacks of this passive dissipate now and then you get 30 magic resistance. So I guess it doesn't give you the movement speed anymore also. Or maybe it does, it's not exactly listed in here. So we'll need to see like the actual item. But now it's 30 magic resistance. And you need 10 stacks for it, less resist, a bit more HP. It's cheaper. No longer gives multiplicative damage, magic damage reduction. That's good. All right. I think it's good. We'll need to take a look at the actual item in game when it's released, which will be tomorrow since the patch is delayed to see it. I don't know, but I like the idea of nerfing this item. <laughs> I do like it. Like it. All right. Gore drinker is cheaper and gives uh, more HP to other items. Fine, all right, so it is a small buff for the gold drinker. I guess mid game ish when you get 25 HP on another item, it's cheaper, that's good. Yeah, fine, it's fine, all right. Not a huge change, small buff, all right. Full breaker. Uh, you, I hunt alone, all right. We're trying a light reshape. It gives you more AD. The cost changed. I don't know why the formatic is now different for those items. So it is now more expensive. Attack damage is more and gains gives you five move speed. And it's got a different build buff. So I don't know, so Scions and Theoric definitely likes this Scion, I don't know. Ilawi. Everyone likes this. Ilawi with the 5 move speed, that's pretty annoying. I don't know. There it is. It's a buff for sure. It's for sure a buff. 10 AD, 5 move speed for 200 gold. Definitely worth it. So there is the Hullbreaker buff. Lord Dominic's regards. Deal increase physical? Physical and magic damage. Okay, because a lot of the items now give magic damage, so you know. To amplify that makes sense nice so that is a small change to dominic lost chapter earlier power spike all right amplifying tom crystal amplifying tom crystal 265 golds so it is cheaper now ludens final cost is unchanged all right so the lost chapter is cheaper but the stats are not changed. That's really good for mid laners because they can just, you know, recall sooner, get the lost chapter and be cheering. So lost chapter is cheaper. That's a, that's quite the buff, all right. Malmortius, may just have options to play around it. So I guess it's getting nerfed. Right, a uh, cost. Lifeline cooldown from 75 seconds to 90 seconds. And lifeline shield duration. Okay, so the cooldown goes from 75 to 90. So now it's more cooldown on Mal Malmortis. That really sucks. I don't like that. 90 seconds is a long time, man. Holy fuck. I do not like this. That kind of sucks. And shield duration is 2.5 seconds. Uh, that's alright. I think that's fine. 
But that's huge nerfs to Malmortis. Huge nerfs. Like... It still works in some situations. I would make it, make it 3 seconds, like, come on. At least make it 3, not 2.5. 2.5 is like kinda short. So it just pops up and it goes down. The lifeline shield only got changed, so they, you still get like the Omni Vamp and stuff, but... For longer, I guess, but... It is cheaper 100 gold, alright. But it's much weaker. With this 90 seconds, oh man, that sucks, that sucks. They could have left the nine, the 75 seconds, at least, you know. Make this if you want to, but like... Seems like a really big uh, nerf to me, alright. Maybe, maybe it's reasonable, alright. Mal Malmortis is pretty strong. It still works, it is cheaper, but it's a nerf. I personally don't like this. Yeah, I don't like it, alright. All right. Rabadon's death cup is a bit underpowered. Ooh, 40% AP now. Nice. That's sweet. All right. So now it gives you more AP. The Rabadon. That's that's cool. That's really nice. That's nice. That's nice. So better scaling for mages. I don't know. Cinderas. Whatever. Anything. Anything with AP. Really likes this. Evelyn. Lol. All right. Sterex gauge. For juggernauts, increase size and tenacity. So now it gives tenacity and size. Size, whatever. It's fine. Okay. And tenacity is nice also. I mean, that's probably not why you buy this, but it's nice. It's a good change. All right. It's a buff for sure. Stride breaker. Sunderers power level. It's funny because before they said that Gord Drinker is lagging behind Stride Breaker, so they're buffing it, but now they're buffing Stride Breaker. So what? Gord Drinker is now again lagging behind Stride Breaker, right? Alright, I'm just saying. So this also got buffed. 6080, that's, that's sizable. For like Darius, Olaf, I don't know who buys this. <laughs> Whoever buys this is good. Alright. All right, three fours. Yeah, ten eighty, quite a lot, sizable. All right, three fours gets a buff. Too much thunderer. Add quality of life buff. Three fold strike is five seconds now. It's not three seconds. Oh come on, right? Guess attack damage is forty. Attack speed is thirty five. So. Buffs, buffs uh, all across the board for like Jax or something. Maybe Jax doesn't go Sunderer anymore, maybe he goes this, who knows, right. But he just buffs, alright. Buffs to 3 fourths. And that is the final item. That is the item changes done for the patch. Man, is this long. Holy. Holy, it is long. Alright. So... Early game adjustments. There are some changes with like minions and stuff. There might be no pulls in the jungle. I don't know. Let's let's read through this. The mid patch will also be making some pretty large changes to do with the goal of making the landing phase more about victories. Mm, there's more mana regen in the fountain. That's nice. I like that. So you can kind of walk out faster. You can also walk out faster with the home guards. Home guard starts at 14 minutes. I don't know how I feel about this, to be honest. So Riot Games said that 14 minutes is the end of laning phase, so we want this. But it's harder to like punish. If you catch an enemy jungler in their jungle, kill them. Then you want to go get the Drake or something. Then there's less time for you to, you know, take this Drake or do anything. Because <laughs> they will just come back sooner. So I don't know, I kinda don't like this, personally. It makes it less punishing to die. That's pretty much what it means. And also, you know, a recall and go back. <laughs> Maybe it's more efficient, I don't know. It's more defensive. 
Makes it makes the games longer for sure. One hundred percent makes the games longer. So less snowbally and longer. I don't like it. I actually don't like it. When when put this way, I I don't like it. All right, blast cone spawn time. There's no blast cone in like uh, the top lane and bot lane. The blast cone over you can like uh, blast cone over the wall to gank top lane from river over like a brush in bot lane so it's something like this so this blast cone like right here and right here this blast cone is gone and i like it it's good i like it whatever stupid blast cones all right so blast cone is out so you can't really gank by jumping over this really good makes some puffings impossible some ganking patterns impossible for some junglers I do like this change personally. I don't know. So this is this and this is gone. <coughs> so I think that's good. Uh, yeah. Minions. Adjusting the speed of minion ways. Let's read the description of this. I think this is actually stupid because now you can't get a pull because the the minions in the silence will be faster, so they will meet at the same time, which means that. There's no time for your laners to pull and go here. So everyone will just start in lane faster. <laughs> I don't know, this this is this is kinda weird. So mid lane minions are always mid first, mid lane mid. Due to the offset minions don't have to risk much for high pressure plays, timing the waves more precisely you put more pressure on mid laners who want to roam. So mid can roam. Yeah, but that's why mid is that's why mid is mid. You clear mid and go roam somewhere, right? Kind of. Look for place, look for vision in the river, something, something. The other minion change will be adjusting how minions act near towers. Being a place minion wave. Alright, so that is it for the first change. Mid laners don't have to reach as much for high pressure place. But what is the, the relationship of the river? This minions meet here. You shove meet. You walk down in the river and what? By the time you go for a gang, then this wave will be cleared. That's what they're they saying, essentially. And you have time to back off. Maybe the gang time, uh, timings are actually offset by this. So you cannot clear meet because the bot lane will like already kind of push their wave and can start going back because they meet at the same time. So ganking from mid to bot is harder. I mean, it still depends on the wave state, like where the wave is, right, on the lane, but... We'll need to see how this plays out. I am a bit skeptical about this, we'll see. And definitely there are no pulls in the jungle, no pulls, it's just no pulls. So I'm gonna be almost dying on my first clear now with the Kiana jungle. What do you do? Whatever. All right, let's see. It's fine. And the second change is the minion aggro. So when minions aggro, minions that are currently attacking enemy tower will ignore call for help signals to target enemy champions. So if you have a minion wave here, you are here, or you're being pushed in here, and someone dives you, and you hit them, then the minions will still just keep hitting the turret. They will not aggro on the champion. Actually, now that I think about it, it's it is maybe a good change. Yeah, because the minions are with you, right? So let's say you're red team. You have red minions here. You know, bunch of minions. You're diving this blue guy. Whatever. And then if this blue champion retaliates, the minions will hit him. But they will no longer hit him under the turret. So they just lock onto the turret and hit the turret. They don't assist with the dive. So it is actually, it's actually better for the defensive. Yeah, so I actually think it's a good change then. I think it's good because 
yeah, it's taking away power from the people who are like uh, who are ahead and putting them, putting a bit more of it into the people who are behind. In a in a tower diving situation, I think this is a good change. Because if you choose to tower dive, you should do it like yourself, right? However, let's say here's an Ari, like here, and I am playing whatever champion, Kiana, whatever. If this Ari hits me, then and I have a huge minion wave here, this huge minion wave is basically not here. It's completely irrelevant, because as long when the minions lock into the turret here, we're both standing here. We cannot do anything. Like, the minions will not aggro on the Ari, right? So I am here. She's here, she hits me. I am in a big minion wave, but really, I have no minions. Kind of how it works, right? So when minions reach the, the turret, they are just gone. They, they will not change aggro to champions, that's it. So even while not diving, like here, you are in minions, but you don't have an advantage. So if your if your minions are here, you have a huge advantage if you have a huge minion wave here. But the moment this wave goes here, those minions essentially leave your team. They're just gonna deal some damage to the turret, that's it. How quickly it changes? It's something you can leverage definitely in some situations. That makes aggressive plays more risky. And like pushing the turrets and being like here, pressuring, it's harder. Because if jungler ganks you, then suddenly it's 2v1, you don't have any minions. Even though you have like, you know, 10 minions here. You really have no minions. So it kind of punishes players who can leverage those minions and use them properly. Because now they don't give you anything. I don't know about this change, honestly. I don't think it's like the end of the world in any case. It's not the end of the world, but... What I don't like about all this is that it makes the game like more defensive, this home guard. Even this mana thing, you can leave the fountain faster, right? I think this is good, but... You know, Blast Cone. All of those changes are es essentially defensive. It's all defensive changes. So it just makes the games longer and longer, man. <laughs> because, you know, now you cannot tower dive, you don't have other advantage being in minions next to a turret. The game just gets longer and longer. You you die, you go out with a home guard on 14 minutes. Man, I don't know. Does that make the game better? I don't know. Games are gonna be longer. That's what it's gonna be. This minion aggro change I don't really like. This I also, actually the, both of those minion changes I don't really like. There is some argument for this, minions being under a turret. But minions meeting on the bot lane. Also they're only speeding up the waves till 14 minutes. After that they're gonna be as they were. I think this is not good, I don't know. No pulls in the jungle. Harder ganks on from mid to bot. So the game is less interactive. You're just kind of farming for 14 minutes. It's harder to like die, or get dived in mid, right? It's harder to dive. So the game is more stale. You're just kind of going to lane farming. Which depending on what champion you're playing, maybe it is actually healthy. That's it's not so snowball and it's not such a stomp based on matchup, but We'll have to see, man. We'll have to see. Game's gonna be longer, overall. More defensive. Game is becoming more defensive with this, with those changes. So if you're playing a scaling champion, then you probably like it. If you're playing a champion that needs to bully early game, then you probably don't like it. I personally kind of like the fact that I can just go to lane and chill out, and you know, farm my minions, stack a, farm some gold. I don't need to be like constantly trading and constantly but I don't know. We'll have to see. It's not like it's not that big of a change, but overall it will make it more defensive and games will last longer, I think. 
All right, turrets. Hybrid builds to the game. Champion damage to turrets. Champion base AD plus whatever was higher. But bonus AD or 60% AP. Champions now deal their total AD plus 60% of their ability power. Okay, so it was bonus AD. Base AD plus bonus AD or 60% ability power. And now it is base AD or total, so total AD and 60%. So you get both now. So base AD plus a plus some AP or plus bonus AD, and now it's both. Okay, and the damage type covers to magic damage if 60% of AP is greater than attackers bonus AD. So turrets take more damage from hybrid champions, essentially. Who does this even affect, like, realistically? I don't know, Kogma? I don't know, it, does, it doesn't really matter. I feel like it's this is kind of irrelevant. It is more damage to turrets or it, but this shouldn't be like too, too significant. So I don't know why I even change it, but there it is. There it is. <laughs> so we deal both. So if you get some AP, you will push faster, always. I guess. All right. Plating. Single gun to leave her out or blast mistake. Cost two to three tower plates. So buying the lane out of control. This is another example that I see individual wins, but do you think it's going to be too far? Yeah, the Nunu breaking everything with heralds. Man, I'm, I still have PTSD. All right, anyway. The following change means that subsequent plates are much harder to take, especially with multiple enemies around. This should affect small wins when where one plate is taken, but should help you avoid losing your entire tower to a single push or rotation from the enemy team. Plate push down resistance 20 seconds after taking a plate. 45 to 20 based on number of champions. So on one champion already you're getting... Holy... I mean, I don't mind. Maybe this is not that terrible. It also makes the game still more defensive, all right? And longer, games are longer, less snowbally. Maybe that's not bad that it's less snowbally. Maybe it's not terrible. I feel like it's, uh, it's just a lot, you know? It's from zero, so on one champion, I guess it was zero or something. But now it's 45, at least. So even solo pushing is going to be harder. I actually don't hate it that much. I don't hate it that much of a change. I don't think it's that bad for the game. If the game started like slower a bit early game. But this feels like a lot of armor to me. It should just be a bit less. Maybe. Maybe make it like 20 or something. Because making those plays, getting those heralds, pushing those turrets is fun. And it's something like, if you do it properly, then you can, you know, break bot or break meat or get an advantage for your lane and, you know, switch bot with meat. I don't know, do whatever, do whatever. But like, I feel like it's like a skill kind of thing. If you can make those plays, so they should be rewarded. Maybe. Mistake, but mistakes should be punished. That's how this game is. Mistakes. It's so annoying if an enemy keeps making mistakes, but they don't get punished enough and then you lose because, <laughs> you know. <laughs> mistakes should be punishable. Maybe this is not terrible. All right, we'll need to see. There it is, turret plating. It is, in any case, that's how they changed it. I think it's not terrible of a change, but it should be maybe a bit less. 45 is a lot. 
I guess it's 45 even on one champion now. Because it's, you know. Yeah. So harder to rush down to Ritz. Alright. Unleashed teleport is unleashed sooner. I think that's good. And the cooldown goes from 330. <laughs> So the cooldown reduces, cooldown is based on level now. So if you reach level 10 by 10 minutes, then you will have, no, but by 14 minutes it was. So now 10 minutes, it's unleashed faster, but the cooldown is like longer, early. So it's gonna be probably around 300 or so, or a bit less than 300. So you can TP to a minion and stuff. I think that's fine. It's not. It's not that big of a deal. You can, you know, gank other lanes, TP and stuff to have more uh, more impact as a top laner or something. Side laners 1v1 a lot more from top to laners is a dream, but also a nightmare. Okay, I agency in early game. So is that a defensive change or is that an offensive change? Can be can, can be either one of those. But if a top laner goes and roams with his TP to a Drake and leaves his turret, then there's then less plating is gonna be taken, so there's less punish for that. Like I don't like the game becoming kind of like a like like a fucking jungle where everyone just does whatever they want and it's one big mess oh you know lol lol 10 minutes into the game lol let's uh, tp bot and make some play lol oh i lost one plating for it lol top lol i don't care lol let's just aram the game let's just make some random tea fights that's all right like if you go bot you should be punished for it right if you make a mistake you should be punished for it Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll need to see. None of this is like the end of the world. It's not like terrible, terrible. But the direction, maybe I don't agree with completely. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. Alright, so those are the early game adjustments. And now let's take a look at the trinket changes. Vision over walls. Alright, fine. Pink enemy champions revealed. Oh, come on. That's... That's fine. A bit excessive, in my opinion. Alright. The taking enemy champion... F yeah, that's pretty annoying that it will pink. Because people can miss it. Like... Uh, maybe... Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's a more of a quality of life change, let's say. You could say that it makes the game easier, but... You could also say that it's just quality of life, right? If we assume that people will look and they will see it, then it's just quality of life. If we assume that it will enemies will be spotted and then people will just not see it, then it is a thing that makes the game easier. So depending how you look at it. All right, let's call it a quality of life update. All right. Upon detecting an enemy champion for the first time, first set will ping the enemy champion on the minimap. Expand. It's vision radius to 800 units and then self destruct. Expand its vision radius to 800 units. What? Alright, because those words are like smaller. So they will like expand for a sec, second or something, and then they will self destruct. Alright, a bit. It's The words are becoming a bit gimmicky. Alright, I get it. Gimmicky words, nice. Alright. Oracle Lens. The day you almost got actively hitting a word. <laughs> so the team can now hit the word. Makes sense. Alright, that's, that's nice. Two charges? <gasps> Two charges, bro. I'm ganking everyone. You're all getting ganked, people. Get out of here. Don't leave the base. Defend your base with the defensive changes. What the hell is this? 
two charges of the oraculans. You can sweep twice in a row. Oh, duration is six seconds. All right. That's still good. That's still good, actually. That's actually still good. Because you want to sweep. Well, you need to be faster about sweeping an area. Actually. Yeah, but you can sweep. You know, you cannot like, go here and sweep this, let's say. But you can sweep here and then you can sweep here. And you can always have one sweeper available, right? Wherever you need it. So we have more sweepers. Shorter, but more sweepers, which is better. For clearing the words. And we have more pinks from the items. The box thing and all this stuff. Alright. And recharge time will be longer. So it's 100 seconds. But still it totals out to having more of this oracle lens. So... Come on, if you have two charges, you have 12 seconds of this. And you can just sweep here, and then you can sweep here. Just walk through it, right? It is a... I mean, it's a good change for clearing the words. I don't know how I feel about it. Makes my life easier as a jungler, I guess, but... Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. <laughs> Maybe it's good. Maybe it's good. Alright. But this is huge. This is massive for the Oracle Lens. And that is actually it, I think. Aram, Aram adjustments. Alright. Mythic Shop. Some skins. Zaya Vane. Living. The Mythic Shop. Bug fixes. That is it. All right, guys. Oh, it is done. So many changes, man. <laughs> so many changes from the items, from the green suit, the, some small champ champion changes, all of the items to the minions, to the early game, to the trinkets. Everything is covered. So that is it for the patch. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, it is really big. It will definitely impact the game in big ways. Well, it's time to buy some Yomu, probably. But not Dusk Blade. Rest in peace, Brawler's Glow. Gwyns is overpowered. I don't even know. We'll see. We'll have to see. We'll have to just test it out and see. But a lot of stuff is changing. Minion aggro, everything is changing. All right. Let me know what you see, what you think about this in the comments. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you like this video even. Because I always enjoyed watching those videos in the past. So I thought, why not? I might, might start making them. If you like them, let me know. And or just leave a like. Whatever, right? Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. And see you in the next one, probably. It's not going to be as long as this one.